Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So Luke, uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 24. Jesus is wrapping up his most famous Sermon on the Mount. And in a way, this is kind of like a parable as well. We're in the sermon series of parables. And so this is kind of like a little mini parable. Have a listen. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. To the reading of his word. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I just want to share this brief word, and then we're going to pray for Stephen and Marjorie and Alex. Pray God's blessing over them. And then we're going to pray for our country. We're going to pray for the world. Amen. As Jesus is sharing this parable about two different houses, one built on the rock, one built on sand. If you notice, they were both the same. They were both built the same. The only difference was the foundation. And you don't see the foundation, right? You don't see it. It's below ground, right, usually. And so one of solid as a rock, the other one shifting sand. And if I can just leave you with this idea, and it's this. When disaster comes, when disaster comes, what you built up is only as strong as what you laid down. When disaster comes, what you built up is only as strong as what you laid down. And so first and foremost, on this side of eternity, uh, I, I'm preaching to the choir, I know. Disaster is just a reality of life. Jesus never promised you and me that we would be free from disaster. And in fact, he said, as Christians, we are to expect it. We are to expect persecution. We are to expect, right? Even Jesus said, in the last days. And the moment he rose from the dead, that's when the last days began. You will hear about, right? Yeah, famine and disease and wars. And of course, we see it every night on, on the news. Absolutely, disaster is a reality of life. It's a reality of our broken world, right? And this, this, is, one, well, this is one of the things that, that we realize as Christians. That, yeah, God made the world. He intended the world to be good, very good. He, he made you and me in his good and his beautiful image. And if there's anything we learn about the Garden of Eden story and Adam and Eve and right the, the temptation and the serpent and that, right? It's, it's that we see brokenness in all of us. We see brokenness in ourselves. And it's our brokenness that affects one another. And quite frankly, yeah. How interesting. How, how, how alarming, how awakening it is that just a little old virus you know, and, and just, just for the record, right, there's no cure for the common cold either. <laughs> and it reminds you and me today just how fragile life is, how precious it is, and how wonderful our God is. He didn't leave us alone. And like Stephen and Marjorie and Alex demonstrated for us today. They realized, okay, yeah, the world is broken, I'm broken, I need, I need Jesus. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. And can I just say this, and Jesus is sharing this parable, right? The other thing that, that, that he's saying is it's the foundation of the house, right, that reveals whether or not it will stand. It will reveal whether or not it's durable. And, and, you know, here's the thing, right? Disaster, uh, if anything, what it does 
in your life and mine, it reveals the foundation that our lives have been built on. And like I said, both houses, they look the same. They're both subject to storms. Doesn't matter, right? One was Bible believing <laughs> or one was not. It comes to all of us. There's no difference. But the difference is what was laid down underneath. And that's what determines if the house will stand up. And can I just say this? The whole time throughout the Sermon on the Mount, I encourage you to read it if you haven't read it before. You know, uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, it's beautiful. Even Gandhi himself said it was the most sublime teaching he had ever heard. And everything you read there, and you're like, wow, this, this is, I don't know if I can do that, right? Because he talks about it, right? You've heard it said, don't kill anybody. But I tell you, if you have anger in your heart towards someone, you've killed them in your heart. Ouch. Right? Uh, right? Love your enemies. What? Right? Uh, go the extra mile. Like, turn the other cheek. All of that's, that's the Sermon on the Mount. And really what Jesus is saying, he's not trying to offer some high moral code. Right? And I love Stephen. Thank you so much for sharing that. Because I think that's something that all of us deal with, whether you're a believer or not. I'm just not, I'm not good enough. I'm not perfect. And that's the number one thing that we have to realize when we come to Christ is, yeah, I'm not perfect, but Jesus is. And I need a savior. I need someone like that. And so Jesus is not offering this high moral code that you're supposed to check the box and live by. No, what he's actually trying to do is reveal himself. He's the only one. He is the rock on which we can build our house. We can come to God now. We can, we can weather storms, not because of how good we are or how good we've prepared, but because of how good he is and because of what he has done for you and for me. Make sense? So Jesus, right? Jesus, Jesus is the answer. <laughs> can I get an amen? Jesus is the rock of our salvation on which we stand. Jesus is the rock that is higher than you and me. And yes, when disaster comes and when times like these come, we don't need to be led by fear. We don't need to be afraid. Yes, be wise. Yes, be prudent. But we, don't, we, are, we are not people who are led by fear. And can I just, can I, let me just offer this quick quote. It comes from uh, Peter Jensen. He was the, the Anglican Archbishop of Australia uh, from 2001 to 2013. And listen to his words. I really like what he has to say. God is in charge, but his son was crucified. If those two things are true, that means we can still believe that goodness will triumph. That righteousness will stand that justice will be measured. A world in which God is both crucified and resurrected is a world where it is possible to have hope in the thickest gloom and deepest sorrow. Let me say that again. A world in which God is both crucified and resurrected is a world where it is possible to have hope in the thickest gloom and deepest sorrow. Our culture has made a habit of setting aside the wisdom of the past especially the Bible. But when we are confronted with great realities in the midst of catastrophes, disasters, the Bible's words suddenly come through with immense power and wisdom. There simply is no other place to turn to, to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort the bereaved, and give wisdom to the simple. And you and I are people who believe in this God, who was both crucified and resurrected, who conquered death, hell, and the grave, who, if I may use the analogy, took on our sickness in himself and vanquished it on the cross for you and for me. 
and then rose again victorious so that you and I now can go forth no longer in fear, no longer plagued by sickness. But now we can be people who go out and are messengers of this hope, this living hope that we can go out. One last thought I want to leave with us today. And then we're going to call up Stephen and Marjorie and, and Alex and the elders. We're going to metaphorically lay hands on them and pray. <laughs> if you call yourself a Jesus follower, if you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself one who believes that Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave, and that to be with Christ is gain, then we are people who are not gripped by fear. And in fact, Christians throughout history have been the ones who have reached out to those who were hurting, have reached out to those who were sick, have reached out to those, have washed their feet and served the least of these. Because we know our God is greater. We know that there's a greater reality. And so I want to encourage you. Yes, right? Yes, we're being wise. And in fact, after I'm done, I'm going to do a little squirt of hand sanitizer. <laughs> But I want to encourage you, don't let this time, don't let this season isolate you into fear and anxiety. Quite the opposite. This is the time to rise up in love and care for one another. Check on one another. Check on your neighbors. Check on your friends. Check on your enemies. That'll annoy them, I'm sure. <laughs> and like Jesus did right before he went to the cross, John 13, he washes the disciples' feet, right? This is the Lord of the universe. He washes his disciples' dirty feet, and then he says, go and do likewise. Yes, wash hands, and then wash feet. In the name of love. Pray with me, please. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that your word is everlasting, that it is health and life for us. That actually, even today, as we looked at your words, Lord Jesus, reminding us that the life we've built is only as good as the foundation that it's on. It confronts us this morning, Lord. Have we been building our house on a rock or have we been building it on sand? And I pray today, Lord, we would put our, our lives on the rock. We would put our lives on you. We would put our families on you. We would put our loved ones, the people that we worry about, we'd put them on you. And we'd put ourselves on you, the rock of our salvation. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us fresh and new. Fill us up so much, Lord, that all the fear, all the worry, all the anxiety, Lord, spills out. And put a fresh confidence, a supernatural confidence in each of our hearts today. God is our protector and defender. God is our shield and strong tower. God is the one who said, I will be with you when you go through the waters. I will be with you when you go through the fire. I will be with you as the storms come. You are the with us, God, and there is none like you. And we worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.